Hi, and welcome to the Misguided Salon Series. I am your host, Paul Goslin, creator of Misguided, and today I am thrilled to bring to you my conversation with the true MVP of Misguided, Robin Romer. Robin has been beside me every step of the way since day one as the director of photography. In our conversation today, we talk about the many hats Robin has worn throughout filming, including her on-camera brief cameo in season one, what it's like to be creative in a pandemic, and the exciting new chapter Robin is beginning in her life. Enjoy. Robin. Hello, Paul. <laughs> How are you today? I'm great. How are you? Great. It's, it's, I'm good. Uh, I feel like I haven't seen you. I mean, I haven't seen you in person in forever, but I, yeah. I think the last time we really had like a small face to face, uh, you were helping me during a Muppets and Puppets week. Oh, yeah. With Oliver. <laughs> So funny that you said that. I remember that it was in May. I was so depressed that week, oh, no. and I was like, <laughs> it was really good though because I was like, oh, the Muppet, the puppets thing, you know. And I was like, really like going through this really tough week, and I just like jumped into the puppet thing, and it somehow like pulled me out of that. I don't know. It was good. It was good for me too. <laughs> oh, good, good. Muppets seem to do that. I mean, anytime I'm sort of in this depressed mood, like I can put on any yeah. Muppet movie, and it's just like, okay. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I've been watching. I've been watching the the reruns of the Muppet Show that just came out. Oh, I haven't. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like excellent medicine for my soul. Yeah. <laughs> um. But anyway, I, I miss the baby Muppets. What were the Muppet what Babies? Muppet. Oh, the Muppet Babies. <laughs> <laughs> baby Muppets. I'm like, what was that show called? <laughs> the Muppet Babies. Yeah. yeah. I was really they, into that as a kid. They uh, rebooted it. And so they have like this new, it's a new animated um, series called The Muppet Babies on Disney. Oh, I didn't know that. There's a few new characters too. And I was like, I don't know any of these people, but oh. Nanny's still there. And is she still just legs? I think she is still just legs. Good. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this is now going to be a Muppet podcast. So I hope okay, that's great. okay with everyone. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Um, <laughs> why don't we start at the be at the beginning? So let's uh, sure. chat about our origin story. How did do you remember how we first met and came to be? Oh yeah, um, I think through our mutual friend Megan um, yeah. had referred you for headshots, right? Is that yeah. how we originally yeah. met? Um, I couldn't remember if it was that or like we were with Megan somewhere and we met. But no, I think yeah, I think you just contacted me. Yeah, Megan had. Uh, she was my office wife, if you will. Um, <laughs> I would I would literally show her any YouTube clip I could find. It would be like, instead of working, we're just like, Megan, you got to check this out. You got to check this out. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> um, you know how office wives, that's it. I do. I know um, about office wives. <laughs> <laughs> so she had told me that she had this friend she went to college with um, that took headshots and, and was a photographer. And then you did... Um, you also were a wedding photographer, so you did Brittany's wedding, and that's where I like yes. put all the pieces together. And I saw the pictures, and I was like, "This is amazing! She is talented." And uh -huh. uh, we met up for coffee, and I was like, "I would love like headshots, but also these lifestyle type shots." And like, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? And you were like, "Let's do it!" And so we went to the High Line, and we did all of these amazing shots that I loved. Like, they're some of my favorite headshots. Um, that so I've ever fun. had. I, I think that was like my favorite thing to do in New York was just like, I like doing like couple stuff too, but when I was shooting weddings, I didn't get to like do stuff that wasn't like wedding related. So whenever I yeah. got to do like headshots or something, it was like, I could like go around the city and find cool places to shoot. I love doing we, that. Yeah, there were some really cool ones because there was like a bunch of different backgrounds that we had, like so many bright colors, which I thought was yeah. something that my personality just like it just likes and, mm -hmm. and none of the pictures that I had 
before that had that like essence. It's hard um, to find in New York City too, because yeah. New York is so like, yeah, New York is very one note as far as like tone and color. And so I would yeah. always try to like seek out colorful things. I feel like there's a lot of cobblestone pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, okay, enough, enough of that. And we found like- Another yellow. brownstone. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. this is cool. So <laughs> yeah, and then you moved out you moved out to LA after me, I think. I think like a year or two after you, yeah. It was shortly, because I was like, oh, who's going to take my headshots now? And then <laughs> you're like, we're moving to LA. And I was like, yay. Yeah. Um, and then shortly after that, I uh, asked you to be a part of Misguided. And yes. I said, do you want to be a part of this crazy idea that I have? <laughs> um, and again, I think we met for coffee or something. And I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. And you have been like a trooper and like helped guide me uh, in this misguided journey. <laughs> I love that. Guide, um, guide in, in the misguided journey. Yes. Did you have any sort of relationship to soaps prior to this misguided thing? I was just, I was, I was thinking that you would ask me this question. So I was thinking <laughs> about it and I was, I don't think I did. I don't think I really watched soaps like, but I kind of, I knew like, I knew kind of the soap look and I knew kind of like the way soap, soaps were shot really just like based on, you know, I feel like you can watch one soap and really get the um, feel of how they shoot soap. Yeah. So, so I went back and um, when you asked me to, to do the series and like watch some stuff just to kind of like refresh my memory of like how, <laughs> how soaps are shot yeah. and, and just kind of like, yeah, which was, which was great because it was, I don't know, it was just kind of fun to like and I, do that. And I think we took the idea of how soaps were shot and sort of built it growing as each season pro progressed. Yeah, um, yeah. I think the, some of the closest stuff we've come was this last season when we had two cameras. We actually had two cameras, yeah. uh, <laughs> which was wonderful uh, yeah. for the day of shoot. And then like editing wise was wonderful as, as well. <laughs> Um, yeah. because soaps, they, they traditionally film with three cameras. So, yeah. and then it's just boom, boom, boom. Um, but that was, I mean, you have been so great in knowing like how to get the shots, how to do the lighting, how to do all of this stuff. And I think having you, I mean, you are a trooper because my, the crew is very, <laughs> it's, it's you and one other person usually. Lean, <laughs> very lean. Lean is an excellent. Yeah. Uh, yes. That's I, it. I mean, I shot a feature like where I was the only crew member, so I was kind of like, okay, I could do this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's kind of unheard of to have two people on the crew. Yeah. <laughs> or one. Although, let me tell you, like, as I know, it's a lot. It's a lot of work, and it's very like, you know, there's a lot going on. But time wise, like. It's just, you're just making the decision. Like, it's just you and I and maybe one other person and we're just, Absolutely. we're just doing it. So instead of having like this full crew that, you know, we have to do everything with everyone and get everyone, like whatever, there's less pieces to move, like metaphorically, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you still have to move all of them yourself, but. <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, that's, um, I, I mean, I know, I don't know how you feel, but I, I like having a lean crew, but I know like having more people would be, you know helpful as well I do I feel like it satisfies my control issues <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I can have control over like my job and I don't have to like rely on other people and I have trouble doing that and delegating and absolutely and it not getting frustrated with people not doing what I want them to do so I I mean obviously it's something I'm working on but I I always felt like that and just as a photographer you usually just have like one or two assistants and they're just doing what you want them to do so yeah it's yeah, it's it's pretty ideal for me. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like I have I've I mean we've worked enough now that like I just trust like you can set up a shot and I just know that it's gonna be the look that I want that because you know what you're doing and I'm just like yes like I think there's been like a handful of times I'm just like can I see what it looks like and I and more or less just for me as a, the actor to know like okay. where where I can act in and like that space but I mean you've been phenomenal. Thank this you. is this is just me praising you all day. I, I hope, know. I, I hope that's it. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> a nice, a nice ego boost on a, yeah. on a Sunday. Thank you. It was. Yeah. It's really. It's been like a really, really fun project, and you're great to work with. So it's been. It's Thank awesome. you.
Like, like I likewise, I think you are a joy. Um, and we've gotten to do some weird, fun things with it. Uh, yeah. We did, I don't know if you remember, um, we, I think it was after the first season, I ended up winning tickets to the daytime Emmys. Oh yeah, I You're, remember, yeah. Okay, sure. so this is, this is going to be like a, a question at the end, but like there's a long way to get there. Okay. Um, but I like, <laughs> <laughs> I've had these, these uh, conversations that I've talked about, like the universe, like is a big picture, like idea and, and believing in signs and things that are meant to be and things like that. And I think um, that was a really good moment for me to see like, yeah, things are progressing nicely. Like you've just won these tickets. I invited you to go with me. We got dressed up. We went to the WB lot. We got vacuum cleaners. Um, <laughs> we did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one of the like the weird coincidences that happened, I don't know if you remember this, but there was someone that wore your dress, the dress you were wearing. Oh, right. <laughs> one of the winners. She was, I had to look it up because I couldn't remember who it was. Um, but I'm going to put up the side by side picture so that you can see. Oh, are we doing um, a who wore it better? Uh, well, you obviously, <laughs> obviously sorry. <laughs> but it was a, I think it was, she was a director from The Bold and Beautiful. She had one, and you like looked at it and we're like, yeah. She's wearing my dress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just one of those moments that like the universe sort of confirmed, you know, we're all just in the right place at the right time, I think. And so now the question, uh, yeah. have you had those moments or have you had one particular moment that stands out so well that um, the universe was like, yes, you're, you're going in the right path. You're doing the right, right thing. I mean, so, so many. I, I'm, not, I'm probably not gonna even be able to think of an example now. But I, I a thousand percent believe in synchronicity. Okay. I think that, yeah, I think that, I, and I, it's weird. It's like, I don't, I'm not one of those people that's like, the universe brought me this person or whatever. Yeah. But weirdly, I believe in synchronicity because I think that there's, um, and now I'm getting like a tiny bit <laughs> philosophical or like <laughs> Please, psychological. Oh, well, but some, I of believe, these, some of these I do. So it's okay. It's oh, good. Okay. <laughs> I do think that all people are connected and I think that there's sort of an underlying like collective unconsciousness. And mm -hmm. so I think, I believe in things like when you're thinking about a person, like they can sense it. Cause I've had that happen where I'm thinking about someone and they'll text me or call me and be like, I was just thinking about you. And I'm like, yeah, same. Yep. Like, that's, that's like a thing. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of a, um, yeah, you know, I, I guess the best example I have from recently that I can remember is um pertains to like the direction like the, I'm, i went back to school okay for psychology um i'm getting my master's um and uh i'm sort of exploring the idea of, of becoming a therapist and i guess the this weird thing happened where i was talking to my therapist <laughs> back in um february and i had just started thinking about this idea um and i think it was like actually in April or something when I was talking to her about this for the first time. And I had for the last couple of weeks before that been thinking about um, how, and I had thought about it before, but I was really starting to like think about it seriously. Like, well, what would this job be like? Like, this would be really great. I would really love this. And we were just talking to each other and there was this silence. There's this pause for a second. And I was kind of talking about direction in life and, and kind of wanting to explore something new. And she's like, I feel like you would be a great therapist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it was so weird. And it was sort of like, um, I think I needed to hear that from a therapist <laughs> in a weird way. <laughs> like I just was like, oh, that's like, it was super validating. And then it was also just sort of like the time, like I just felt almost like weirdly. Yeah. I felt weirdly um, uh, not embarrassed, but just sort of like, uh, shy about the idea of, of bringing it up okay. to her and so she just sort of brought it up on her own and yeah stuff like that I feel like happens for a reason or just happens because like there's some sort of connection connectivity going on yeah, yeah. I mean I 100% I agree <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that's awesome I I um I know we haven't really spoken about like this career path and I've, I've just seen bits and pieces on your um, Instagram yeah. uh, page, but I, I was actually looking at it earlier today, just to sort of um, 
not well, not just put pieces together, but sort of just see like the year because it's been yeah. it's been a year. Yeah, uh, it's been a year. But there was there was a post you did recently, and I I don't know if this is a lesson that you learned just because it happened um, in twenty twenty. Uh, but you, you wrote that I, I, as a reminder to yourself that I am not my work mm -hmm. and it, I mean, as an actor, or, you know, that I, it sort of like really speaks to me. Like this is, this is just, you know, I am not my work. I have, there's so much more and learning in, in 2020 that I am more than all of these other things. And it's mm -hmm. been, it's been a year. <laughs> um so what is that so is that would you consider that one of your biggest lessons that you've learned about yourself in 2020 yeah um yeah I think so I think as I get older I get more comfortable with the idea of just um like being Robin <laughs> yeah and being myself and not being um tied to a certain aspect of my personality or a certain aspect of um of life and knowing that just sort of changing and uncertainty and all this stuff is really super normal and we're kind of always evolving and that doesn't mean that we're losing anything or like we're not you know it just it it's a it's an idea that I feel like it took me a really long time to to like accept and definitely yeah the pandemic was tough because I was just like not working and even when people would reach out to me I wasn't comfortable working so I wasn't okay. comfortable on sets um especially in the beginning yeah um and so it was just sort of like uh yeah just this acceptance of like you know this isn't where my worth lies you know this isn't um this doesn't you know say anything about who I am or even even my talent right yeah. and that's like something that's I feel like especially in this town, right? Like everyone's <laughs> measured, everyone's sort of like yes. there's contests and there's award yes. shows and everything is measured and it's um it's it's hard it's a hard thing to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we I mean, I feel like we've gotten really heavy for a little bit. So I wanna sort oh, yeah. of light, light, of course. Light, lighten this up. <laughs> um but speaking of the pandemic and working in the pandemic, I think this was this was pretty early on in our, you know, safer at home uh chapter. You and Carly got to work this Entertainment Weekly cover with the All Stars for Drag Race. Yes, yes. and it, it was called like a virtual cover, correct? Is that the term? Yeah, yeah, okay. it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was curious how that came about, and could you describe like what it was like to to right. do this? What I, it looked like an amazing uh, concept and project. That was really cool. Um, EW reached out to us to do their. They have these digital covers that they do every month. And um, they wanted to do a co the uh, cover um, uh, remotely, like have everybody, all the queens basically um, do their own shoots at home, but they were kind of, uh, you know, struggling with like, how do we do this? And um, Carly and I were a great team on it because um, I was able to sort of like put together these kits that we mailed. <laughs> And at the time, honestly, like even Amazon, like you couldn't order anything from Amazon without it taking like a month, right? That was like in April. So right. things were kind of a mess. So we had to like really hunt down like what would be, and all rental houses were closed and all that. So it was the kind of thing where we had to hunt down. Um, I think we got the kits from like Target or Best Buy or something. We had to like, you know, put those together in the different places that the Queens were and ship them out and then sort of um, walk, walk each queen through, um, setting up. And honestly, most of them have their own lights and have their sure. own stuff anyway. So, yeah. So we came up with this concept of sort of these moving portraits that sort of would, um, be in this grid. Um, and yeah, we spent a couple of days in May, um, uh, where we would a couple a couple we would call a couple queens a day over zoom and they would like kind of position their computer so we could see what was going on and you know walk them through shooting and everyone shot on their phones and um sent the footage and it was edited from there and they had a really amazing post team work on like just really getting the look uh, yeah. consistent throughout but yeah it was really cool it turned out um out great it did and i and i, I think that word uh consistent really uh resonated because it did like everyone was in their own space but everything looked so cohesive and it was oh, good, yeah 
it was, um, I mean, I just remember being so fascinated. I was like, wow, this, like, <laughs> this came together, like, with, with, like, everyone in their own home. Like, it, it almost gave me the, um, I mean, it did give me the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, not acceptance, but, like, the idea that, like, things are possible. Like, creativity can live on and we can still do things. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, I mean, we, I don't think we even imagined what March 2021 was going to look like, you know, <laughs> like, <Nope. laughs> like I, 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 every month I was just like, it's, it's another month. It's another month. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, oh, we're still, oh, we're in this still. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, yeah. I've definitely done all of the quarantine stuff, like redecorating <laughs> my entire apartment and, uh -huh. I baked a loaf of bread and like, well, I know I was going to say, did you make banana bread? Great. I did not make banana. I made a challah bread. Oh, wonderful. I, I know. I, uh, yeah. my first attempt and, uh, the braiding, uh, yeah. you know, a little work, but it was delicious. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oliver and I cool. uh, did that together. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, but yeah, I think that that, I mean, that cover really was, um, inspirational, I think is, is a good word to, to say, um, and use. Yeah. Um, so I asked this about misguided to a lot of the co-stars in the show and, and because you have worked from day one, season one, um, is there something that you've loved shooting, filming, um, in the course of our seasons that you were like, this actually looks really good or this came together like I didn't know how this would come together but it just mm. it just did and it, it works and it looks good yeah um I feel like I had a lot of those moments when we were shooting um but I really loved shooting at the house whose house were we shooting at? I can't oh the, like the therapist's office yeah I like that season? house was that really was, fun it was a really great house that's um, um yeah and uh so I don't know. I, I, I think that that was really fun because it really, I, I liked it because it felt, <laughs> it felt really realistic, like as a therapist's office yeah, and it was it, just like a really beautiful room and there was a great light in it. And so I liked that. It was really fun. Well, might be starting to regain some of his memories. What else do you remember from this time? Uh, let me see. I don't think anything. I mean, I couldn't tell you who I eventually took to my senior prom, but that's mainly because I got blackout drunk and ended up in the hospital getting my stomach pumped. Oh my gosh, I did it again. <laughs> that was another memory. That was a memory. Whoa. Oh. 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 La. Lucci. <laughs> Wait a second. It was Kyle. Yes. Who's Kyle? The library, it, it was, so it was my um, boss's, uh, the family I, I manny for, it was their house. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right, their yeah. previous house because they have right. since moved. But um, but yeah, that library just sort of gave like a really realistic yeah. feel to, to it being a therapist's office. There was a giant globe in the background. Like, <laughs> I mean, like. I know, it looked art directed. I was like, wow, yeah. that's great. I mean, they were in the process of moving, so like it had just been staged for you know pictures and whatnot. So it was like perfect timing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think I think that it just gave that nice like we could do like different shots in it too. The I think the only thing I really wish we had um, utilized was the fireplace in it. I don't know if oh. I, I mean we could have had. Um, I think we had talked about like when she rips the picture or something, throwing it in the fire, but whatever. Oh, you know, man. Just yeah. to have it a little more dramatic, but Drama, I, think it was, yeah. I think it was great as it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think I think it yeah. worked out nicely because we don't need it again, that set, so, because they moved. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> but also, it was cool. It was cool to, like, make the standing sets that we worked in work and see how that would come together. Because I remember, like, there were a couple times that we would walk into a room and I'd be like, I don't know if this is going to, like, you know, like they're standing sets. They're not always like, like exactly how you want them. And, yep. you know, and we're not working with like an art department. So, but we were able to like, I think make them work and look really good. And so anytime that we were able to do that, that was really fun. Oh, I loved filming the jet jail scene. So <laughs> it was Honestly, I felt like I was filming Chicago. It was great. <laughs> like I just... I loved that jail scene. I know. So I I was really happy with it. I I, mean, <laughs> I don't know 
when I'll ever act in a jail cell again like that. But it was just, <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. And I'm, it's like, and Yvette was so good. Like, she just <laughs> so brought it good. to life. Like, I believe uh -huh. she was in jail and it just oh, yeah. it worked. And then to have a death oh, in the jail scene, I mean. Uh-huh. The death God. scene was really unbelievable. There was like so much. <laughs> <laughs> the choking scene where she just oh, I falls. know and so the, dramatic the uh the door like the door to the cell wasn't actually locked so it like moved <laughs> <laughs> <I> That's <know, laughs> <it's> great <laughs> forgot about that <laughs> like oh well I guess we'll fix it in poster or just hope for the best still works but yeah I think I think I mean I've definitely talked about this before um with various people and it's come up a lot but I think um for me, the wedding, uh, that whole episode, like the oh, whole yeah. shots of everything, it came together so nicely. And I will we'll probably talk about that forever, about how wonderful it was. And I think it's largely due to you, to you and Selena, who helped um, put that all together. And I, I think having you be a wedding photographer was, was a secret asset that we could utilize. Um, whether it was putting a boutonniere on, on Justin or yeah. <laughs> or uh, just like getting those like B-roll shots of like the cake and um, the Mr. and Mr. sign, my Susan Lucci doll. Show of hands, who's excited to get married today? <laughs> <laughs> you look great. You really do. Let's get you married. All right, let's do this. <laughs> But like, I think it, I think it came together um, because you had like a really strong eye on how to make, it was again, how to make that standing set, like work to what we needed. Yeah, I did utilize some wedding knowledge there. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, how would, how would we make this into a wedding? Yeah, I remember when you showed me the script and there was a wedding scene in it. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Let's be realistic. <laughs> but we made it work. It was we, great. I mean, yeah, we did. And and I know I and we, I think we learned a lot, you know, as a team, like what we would do in the future if that was the case and maybe splitting it up into two days and not doing a full day, you know. But I mean, we we did. I I think we did 18 pages that day. Yeah. Between, yeah. <laughs> between, between the between the wedding and then the, all of the other scenes that happened within the restaurant, like mm -hmm. 18 pages in like an eight hour day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Impressive. I mean, yeah, I nicely think done. It was. I nicely think done. You too. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it's sort of like it's interesting, like to be able to like when you're presented with a challenge of working being creative within certain bounds or certain like limitations like yeah. um it's always interesting like what uh if you're able to just like be flexible and like be like keep keep it sort of positive and just put keep pushing through like it's pretty yeah. unbelievable what you can just you in general i'm saying the general you yeah. what people can accomplish like if you really like are like you know what we're gonna do this <laughs> yeah i yeah. mean i think i think a part of it um goes back to us being such a small crew too. Like it definitely yeah. helped that we could just like make a quick decision. We didn't have to confer with like a bunch of different people um, that it just, we could just do it and set up a shot, do it, set up a shot. And the, the I mean, the two cameras helped that day. Like there was a lot of things that we could do to speed up the process. And, mm -hmm. and we also were working with like amazing professional actors that like, yeah. you know, they come in, they, they do their thing and I mean, we don't have like a lot of takes, nope. which is which is great and helpful. Yeah, yeah. Everyone was a one take wonder that day. It was so. Yeah, nice. it was really <laughs> cool. Really cool. Um, so I want to talk about photography for just a, a quick second because I mean, you've done a lot, like between yeah. book covers and and photo shoots and and whatnot. Um, and you've you've 
photograph celebrities like Lady Gaga and Katy Perry, um, Willem, um, YouTube stars. Like, is there anyone that you would love to do photographs with of and with? I guess, I don't oh, know gosh. if that's two different questions, but just like, is there someone that you're like, I just, I think that they're like stunning enough that I could just like take some really gorgeous shots of them. Yeah. Just curious. Just curious. I mean, so like selfishly, like I have, I have like a celebrity. Um, I have, I'm, I'm like a pretty obsessed with Chrissy Teigen as a celebrity. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like, um, and I think she's beautiful and I think she's so fun. And like, I just am like, I don't, I don't, I'm not like a person that cares that much about celebrities, like, mm -hmm. in, like in general, but I love her so much. So I guess I would probably pick her because she's just so much fun. And I just yeah. feel like, um, pers it's like all about personality for me. Like I just, yeah. And she's beautiful. So that would be, I guess, I guess, yeah. And I, I've said that before. I remember when I used to have the Twitter, I'd be like, does anyone know Chrissy Teigen? <laughs> yeah. No, I think that, I think she would be a wonderful, you know person to work with alongside yeah. and just and I've taken pictures of John Legend so I oh I mean you're almost there, there. You're, you're practically <laughs> yeah you're practically at their dinner table already <laughs> right we're practically <laughs> friends <laughs> um I'm thinking I'm just looking over I think we might have um done all these questions that I had already that I had prepped for wow. um we just sped right through this oh um but I wanted to just like, I, I wrote these all down just because I was like, I can't believe, I feel like I have to say out loud, what an MVP of Misguided you are. Because not only like director of photography, you've done, you do the lighting, you've done sound production design, you've, uh, you even stepped in as a background player in season <laughs> one. <laughs> So hopefully I was able to answer some of your questions about the dynamic world of daytime television. Oh, thank you everybody for coming today. Like you set up the camera and then just walk across. <laughs> I was like, what can't yeah. she do? <laughs> um, so I do, I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for going on this journey with me and, and doing it so uh, enthusiastically and like with, with, almost as much passion uh, that I have for it. And, and not, it didn't ever feel like you were just there. You were always so present and committed to the show, um, which is so helpful and lovely. And it just means a lot. And it's so helpful to have someone that you can trust setting up those shots and doing all of that stuff. So this is my like, thank you to you. Publicly. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, Paul. It's been, <laughs> it's been really great. And you're very inspiring the way that you also been able to like write, direct, and star in your <laughs> show. Like that's incredible. And and you've always just been so dedicated to it that it's like inspired and motivated me along the way. So thank you for oh. having me be part of it. You're welcome. Um, is there any advice, the last question, any advice that you have for someone that wants to do something similar to what we've done and put together and um, any sort of yeah. advice, I guess? Yeah, um, I guess the best advice is to just do it, like, um, and to not worry about making mistakes, um, and to not worry about being it being perfect all the time. Like, I think we get really wrapped up in perfectionism and, and thinking yeah. that things have to be a certain way. And sometimes the best creative things come out of um, letting go and just being like, I don't know how this is going to turn out. And sometimes it turns out even better than what you could have imagined or planned for. That's perfect. I like that. I like yeah. that a lot. Okay. And I think I agree a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I know you're on, uh, you got rid of your Twitter, you've said, um, <laughs> but you're on Instagram. So I'll put, uh, it's Robin shoots at yes. Instagram. Uh, and I'll put that down below when I do some post edits. Um, and then I guess that's it. Uh, we will see you guys, I guess, next week or whenever the next one drops. And uh, take care. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Robin, for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>